Hey, what's up folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. This is my third and final video in my series of the teardown of the Ford Duratec 2.0 HE engine. And in this video, we're going to be getting into the engine block. You can see that it's missing the head. I've actually got the block upside down sitting there in front of us here. And we're going to be getting into the bottom end of this thing and talk about a few things that we see in the process of tearing it down. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so to start out with, we're just going to go ahead and remove totally this oil filter adapter here and get it out of the way. You can see you got some oil passages for oil to go through. Uh, to go into and out of the oil filter there and we have our oil pressure sensor or oil pressure switch excuse me it's a switch and there would be a gasket right here to seal off those oil passages to the block there but I previously took that gasket off and I don't know what I did with it but there would be a metal gasket right here all right let's go ahead and remove this oil pan I've already taken the bolts out previously so let's go ahead and take this off right here see what we can find and by the way guys as I mentioned in my other two videos before this one I'm not using proper techniques for tear down uh, you can see that this thing is all damaged this thing is going to the, the junkyard so I'll be handling these parts in a way that's not really good practice there we go you can see we got the oil sump here that's where your oil sits and that's what holds the oil in the engine. And this is your oil pickup right here. This goes to the bottom of the sump or the oil pan. And this is where the oil is sucked into the oil pump right there. And this thing is held on by two bolts and those bolts have eight millimeter heads on them. We'll go ahead and remove those. And there is a seal that goes between the pickup and the oil pump a very important part that uh, if it were to fail and leak it could cause oil starvation because it would be sucking air in the oil pump rather than sucking oil so anytime this comes off you definitely want to replace that seal there to ensure you don't have that issue uh, you don't want any engine damage due to oil starvation now some of you may be wondering about this right here uh, there is not actually an oil pan gasket that goes between the oil pan and the engine block this is rtv right here and that's what seals the oil pan to the engine block okay so now we're going to go ahead and remove the oil pump but before we can do that we have to remove the sprocket that drives the oil pump and the sprocket is held on by a bolt that has a 10 millimeter head on it and we have to remove that sprocket first because there's another bolt right behind it that you won't be able to get out unless the sprocket is removed. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to be using a method that's not conventional. And I don't suggest you use this method. And because you can damage your sprocket, I'm going to use some channel locks on it. There you go. And there's your sprocket. And that sprocket is keyed, by the way. And so is the oil pump. Once the sprocket's out of the way, you can remove those bolts. And there you go. That's your oil pump right there. That's the heart of the engine, basically. It pumps oil throughout the whole engine. Of course, there's a passage right here that the oil is delivered through. It comes right out of this hole in the back of the oil pump here, right into that oil passage there. And then that feeds the entire engine, including the cylinder head and uh, everything in the valve train and whatnot. Uh, the root of all that is right here. It kind of branches out and lubricates the whole engine. And you would think that there would be some sort of a gasket between the oil pump and the block, but there's no gasket it's just bolts right up metal to metal all right coming back here to the opposite end of the engine we're on the back side of the engine here this is your flywheel or flex plate and it's held on by bolts of course I've removed those previously so we can go ahead and pry this flex plate right off get it out of the way that will expose the rear main seal all right there we go and this is the back side of our crankshaft right here. And this is our rear main seal. And it's held on by bolts. There are six bolts that have 
eight millimeter heads on them. We're gonna go ahead and remove this. Now there's something interesting about this rear main seal I need to point out once I get it off. This is a common area for technicians to make mistakes. There's a lip on the seal. I don't know if you can see that or not. This lip right here. See that lip? It's pointed inward towards the block right there. A lot of technicians will think that that lip should go outward and that's intuitively what you would think the way it should go but it's not it's, the lip is supposed to go inward this is the original rear main seal right here and it's never been removed and you can see when they installed it they installed it with the lip going inward towards the block when you originally get this seal before you put it in it won't look like that it'll be kind of flattened out i got a picture of one right here that you can see it's kind of flat all the way around. There's a special tool you're supposed to use to install this thing so that you ensure that that lip is going inward. Also, another thing to point out here, you can see that the outside lip of this seal, you won't have this outside lip as it looks on this seal, on the new seal. You see kind of got this fuzzy seal or fuzzy lip on here. The new seal will not have that, that fuzz on there. So whenever you get into a uh, doing a rear main seal job and you find that the lip is fuzzy like this on a 2.0 it's probably the original equipment rear main seal it probably has never been replaced before so i got a i got a video explaining a little bit more in depth that point right there and i'll post a link down in the description of this video to that video feel free to to watch that whenever you get a chance there but yeah a really important point to note there about the orientation of that lip now going to the uh, innards of the engine block here you can see that we have our crankshaft right in the center here it goes all along the center of the bottom side of that uh, crankcase and then you have your main bearing caps here and the main bearing caps are actually a part of this skirt right here and that helps to give it a little bit more rigidity and of course you have your connecting rods and those are connected to each throw of the crankshaft and of course your connecting rods are connected to your pistons and unfortunately for this engine I'm not going to be able to spin that uh, crankshaft for you to show you how the the pistons go up and down um, I got some footage right here of a previous teardown that I did uh, I was able to manage to get the pistons to go up and down uh, after I removed some uh, but this thing right here is is pretty daggum locked up so uh, this is probably as far as I'm going to get as far as the teardown um, but you know other than that it's it's really typical for an engine block uh you know you got your connecting rods you got your pistons you got your crankshaft uh the block is made of aluminum of course that's a good point to point out there um but other than that pretty pretty run of the mill folks i think this is going to conclude uh my series on the teardown of this engine here uh if you have any questions of course feel free to comment down below i'll be happy to get to you whenever i can also guys, please read the entire description of this video down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. There may be some things I need to clarify and that's where I do that. Also, please read the disclaimer at the very end of it. Thanks again guys. Please like and subscribe. Have a good one.